Welcome, everybody. Um, I am Marley Stein, the Associate Director of Study Abroad, and I'm actually also the Honors College Liaison. So I'm excited to share a little bit more about what Study Abroad can look like for Honors College students. And then later, we will be hearing from um, one of the faculty directors for an Honors College program and also have the opportunity to be um, introduced to Fermin Valle, who is um, one of the Honors College advisors. A little bit of an overview of what we're going to cover today. Um, for starters, why should you study abroad? There are many reasons and I'll go into those a bit later. Um, benefits for Honors College students specifically, um, introduction to working with the Honors College advisors, um, where can you study abroad, the types of programs we offer, academics abroad, um, and internship service learning and research abroad. Uh, how the application process will go, since that is a new system we're implementing right now. Uh, funding resources, which I know is a hot topic and everybody wants to learn more about. Um, and then some stories from alumni, if possible, um, and then some program highlights. So I wanted to start with a little bit of an icebreaker to see who's with us and um, what your interests are for study abroad. So big thumbs up. Uh, you can either use your thumb to gesture or you can use one of the, the um, symbols that Zoom has to gesture the big thumbs up or a smiley face, whatever works for you. Um, but just to see a little bit about who's in this Zoom room with us, uh, big thumbs up if you have ever traveled abroad. Uh, big thumbs up if you speak a language other than English. Okay. Uh, big thumbs up if you feel strongly about a major global issue, gender, gender equality maybe, or environmental sustainability, public health. Wonderful. Um, big thumbs up if you want to gain new perspectives. Great. Uh, big thumbs up if you want to participate in extracurricular or co-curricular opportunities such as internships, research, or service learning, either abroad or um, locally. Wonderful. Uh, big thumbs up if you enjoy interacting with others from diverse backgrounds. Awesome. I see a lot of you are leaving it in the chat, which is great. Um, big thumbs up if you... Oops, sorry. Um, you want to study abroad. So if you want to study abroad, let's see a big thumbs up. Awesome. Christine, Salma, wonderful, a lot of you. Um, so what this activity shows is that th you all have a genuine interest in either studying abroad or becoming a global citizen and engaging internationally in a variety of options that um, both that are both offered locally and abroad. Um, so I'm here to tell you a little bit more about those abroad opportunities and how you go about um, in, um, participating in those. It's great to see that interest. Um, all right, so I started, started with um, figuring out if you're ready or interested in study abroad, but now I'm gonna tell you a few of the um, reasons why you should study abroad. Um, so personal benefits to increase self-confidence, develop intercultural competency, gain direction and clarity for your goals. Um, many students choose to study abroad earlier on in their undergraduate career and use it as an opportunity to explore various majors and disciplines and see sort of a practical application of those <clears throat> disciplines. Um, other students choose to study abroad later in their undergraduate experience once they have a really strong foundation in a particular area, and then they're able to complement it with a global dimension abroad. Um, and then also to discover new interests and passions. Sometimes students um, <clears throat> might discover a global issue that they're passionate about, uh, or they might choose to um, they might choose to um, pursue a minor abroad as well. Um, I'm going to jump over to academic benefits because they're kind of related to some personal benefits. Um, one of them is the, a major one is you can actually earn UIC credit while living and studying in another country. So all the courses that you take abroad will transfer back as UIC credit on your transcript. Um, what those will look like will depend on your, your academic advisor um, uh, um, approval process, and those could be electives, gen eds, or ideally towards your major. 
Um, and then it also can add an international comparative dimension to your degree. A lot of courses that are taught abroad take an interdisciplinary approach with um, pulling from multiple disciplines. And as an honors college student, that is a that could be a particular interest to you because um, many honors college students pursue multiple majors and minors um, and really look at major global issues from a variety of perspectives and academic areas. Um, like UIC, uh, students have the opportunity to enroll in large universities that have um, uh, a copious amount of course offerings. So what might not be offered here at UIC, even though we have a lot of great course offerings, might be offered abroad as well. Um, and then to understand alternative ideas and solutions to issues with your within your discipline. Uh, another great academic benefit is um, being able to hear from practitioners and experts in the field globally, as opposed to some of the ones that are just local. Uh, now that we're shifting to more of a virtual learning environment, um, I know many of our many of you have maybe already had that opportunity. Um, I'm gonna jump back to professional benefits. Uh, it's a really wonderful way to develop transferable and soft skills such as um, flexibility, ability to um, deal with ambiguity and the unknown, uh, communication skills with different um, diverse uh, nation, nationalities and diverse uh, backgrounds. Uh, it can expand your professional network. Uh, here at UIC, we have a great tie to the Chicagoland area. That, um, and what this will do is it'll allow you to take courses with US students from all over the world, all over the country, um, to expand those networks professionally. But also, while taking those classes, you would also be able to um, have uh, guest lecturers where you'd be able to network with them from uh, on a more of a global perspective. A global way. Um, another wonderful way, and I'll talk about it a bit later, is the ability to gain real world work experience by either interning or conducting research abroad. Uh, this you would earn credit for this opportunity, but it's a great way to already when you graduate have a professional opportunity within your um, area of study to then uh, assist in securing a position after um, graduation. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to um, Fermin to talk a little bit about um, how he can support you as the Honors College Advisor and liaison to the Study Abroad Office. All right. Thank you so much, Marley. Um, my name is Fermin Valle. I am an academic advisor here in the UIC Honors College. And one of my programming areas includes uh, supporting students who wish to study abroad as part of their experience here at UIC. Um, this is one of my new programming areas. And certainly, um, I have yet to work with a single student that's successfully been able to go abroad. But just to say that I'm still excited, and two, um, I'm not new to working with honor students in my previous role as an advisor. I had been advising at my previous institution for about six years, and I did get to see a lot of students take advantage of the experience of going abroad. Um, one thing that I really enjoyed about it was supporting students who were in their junior or senior years who were looking to take on programs that involved conducting research, doing an independent study, collaborating with an expert somewhere around the world that shares an expertise or an interest in something that maybe you can't find here at UIC, and working with students to translate that experience into a two semester capstone experience. So for anyone that's interested in that option, that's one way um, that I would work on supporting you. In addition, uh, please know that we do accept uh, study abroad as an honors activity. So there's no need to pursue an additional activity while you're abroad. By going abroad, we'll accept it and it'll, it'll still keep you on track with your honors requirements. You can also um, work with advisors to see where it fits in within your four-year plan here at UIC. So, whether you're studying abroad your sophomore, junior, or senior year, we can help you see where it fits in with the overall required number of honors units. We will be offering study abroad scholarships to support students who want to go abroad for the spring 2022 term in the amounts ranging between $500 and $2,500. Uh, I just started in this role, so I'm working in the next week or two to finalize the application 
deadline, but it will mostly likely be October 15th, which is the deadline to apply for uh, spring programs, I believe. Is that correct, Marley? Okay, yes. So most likely align with the application uh, for study abroad programs. And so I think today was mostly just about introducing myself, saying hi, and uh, to let you all know that we are here to support you um, every step of the way. So thank you so much. And I look forward, hopefully, to um, working with you all more closely. Yeah, and I think that while the study abroad office can certainly offer a lot of guidance and advice in integrating study abroad into your four-year plan, um, your honors college advisors are really going to be your best support in seeing what will complement your studies um, academically, your leadership goals, things like that. Um, so definitely work with both of us together to find the program that makes the best um, sense for you long-term and might help you complete some of your requirements. Uh, so I'm going to move on and I wanted to introduce you to our team. Not all of us are, are here today, but um, our executive director, Kyle Rausch, comes to us from Purdue North Northwest and um, Arizona State University. Uh, he is really transforming study abroad and making it more accessible with technology, as well as uh, expanding our faculty directed program um, portfolio, which we'll get into a little bit later what that model looks like. Uh, Arena Kermova is our Senior Associate Director. She advises for um, our programs in Asia, Africa, and um, parts of Europe, uh, Denmark, Sweden, and uh, Russia. She also is the lead faculty uh, on faculty-directed programs and um, is involved in some of the scholarship and, um, and billing processes. Uh, then me, I advise for our programs in Latin America and parts of Europe, so Spanish speaking, Germany, uh, Italy, and a number of other locations in Europe. I also am the Honors College liaison, and then I uh, manage our scholarship portfolio and lead and host a number of scholarship workshops, which I, I'll share momentarily with all of you. Um, I, if you need assistance in reviewing scholarship essays, um, I am a resource as well for that. Um, so please know that you can come for support in applying and securing funding at any point throughout uh, your undergraduate uh, career to, if you're interested in studying abroad and, and securing additional funding for that. Uh, next is Crystal Williams, who is our advisor for English speaking, uh, whoops, advanced, English speaking Europe, um, as well as Oceania, so New Zealand, um, Australia, and then France uh, as well. And then Maggie Miller, who is our first point of contact. I, some of you probably have already interacted with her. Um, she does some general advising as well um, as our first steps advising as well. And she is a great resource for your first point of contact to help guide you in the right direction and which advisor might make the most sense um, to speak with um, in greater length. Uh, you can schedule appointments with all of us um, via iAdvise. Uh, so just, um, and then you can also explore our regional advising portfolios um, on that website that I have listed there as well. Um, so where can you study abroad? It's a great image of just really highlighting the scope and the, the opportunities that UIC has had worldwide. We are ever growing our portfolio. So if there's something in our program search database that um, not something there for you, let us know and we'll work with you to find um, an affiliation that, um, oh goodness, that is possible for you. Um, we offer pro over 200 plus programs in 87 locations, uh, 50 countries and counting. Uh, so there are certainly uh, many, many opportunities for you. Um, all of these can be found in our program search database. Um, it's our new Flames Abroad portal. Uh, we include as many programs as possible, but there are many that are not listed there just to not overwhelm you. Uh, so please meet with an advisor if you're having any trouble selecting a program. That's what we're here for to support you in. Um, so types of programs. You'll see a lot of programs. It's important to understand uh, the differences between them and what might make the most sense for you. Um, so faculty directed, uh, you'll hear from one of the faculty directors shortly at the end of this presentation, is usually a short-term program that occurs over summer or academic break, so summer or spring break. 
and it's led by a UIC faculty member. Uh, while abroad, you're going to be doing UIC coursework as opposed to having a course um, count as an equivalent for a UIC program. And so the great way about this is it's a very supportive environment. We're able to travel abroad with a cohort of other UIC students under the leadership of a UIC faculty member. So you're already familiar or you might already be familiar with their teaching style, their approach, but yet you're getting the added benefit of a global dimension to a course that they that they teach. Um, they're usually very, very um, jam packed with lots of experiential learning opportunities, site visits to museums and um, with and, and universities and historical monuments, as well as um, uh, guest lecturers um, in the field. Partnership program to date, this is our most popular program um, simply because that was our offerings before. Um, these are offered in the sum summer semester and if you are interested in academic year as well. Um, these are organized by UIC's program partners. So we work with affiliate partners all over the world. Some are US based institutions um, that have program centers abroad while others are um, have a, an extension office from a international university. Um, so there are study center and local university options. And then one, which is, is popular, um, there are stud a study center, you would take the majority of your course at the study center, but have the option to take one or two classes at the local university. Um, the nice thing about these is all of these courses and programs are, um, uh, the courses are pre-approved before you go abroad. Um, so they're going to have course equivalencies for you here at UIC. Um, this, the study center is, is going to allow additional support. You'll be taking courses with all um, U.S. students and international students who study in the U.S., um, but you'll be taught by local faculty. So you'll still have that global um, and local immersion opportunity. Um, and then at a university, it's a little bit more independent in nature, and you're really um, adapting to the um, local academic culture. Uh, exchange uh, is for the more independent student. It's an option uh, for students who receive a certain type of financial aid. Um, tuition waivers is the specific one. So if that is you, uh, let us know and we'll talk through the exchange options. It's primarily semester and academic year. I would say almost all but one. Um, and you actually pay regular UIC tuition. So um, you pay UIC tuition as if you were uh, attending UIC, but you'd be enrolled at a, another university. Um, and then you're able to take courses with local students in the host country language. Uh, there's an ex there's expansive course offerings, just like it would be at any university. Um, before I move on, I just want to say that you do not need to know a second language to study abroad. It's great if you have already started understanding one, because that can only further develop your, um, your language skills while living and um, studying abroad. But you can take any course um, in English. We have programs pretty much everywhere in the world that has some English language course offerings. Exchanges are going to be um, the universities for the most part are going to be taught in the in the host language. Oops. So this model is pretty helpful. Um, it's pretty helpful to see the differences between them. Um, so financial aid is eligible for all of the programs. Uh, as I mentioned, the tuition waivers would be the reason you would need to do exchange. But um, just like you receive financial aid to attend UIC, um, you would receive financial aid to be applied to study abroad. So the money you receive to, to attend UIC, you can apply to your study abroad program. So for partner programs and partner uh, program center and partner direct enroll, you would pay directly to the partner, um, but you'd still receive a financial aid. Faculty directed works a little bit different. Um, and then exchange, you would pay UIC tuition. Um, scholarships are available for all of these programs. Uh, they, they vary, but they're available for all these programs. There are a few less in the exchange area. However, um, there, those are ever growing. Coursework is available in English at pretty much all of them. Um, and then there's both short term uh, and some are available for faculty directed partner program center and partner um, direct enroll. Um, so academics abroad, uh, UIC credit, um, if you're going to earn UIC credit that counts towards your GPA, so that's important to remember, it is not a semester off, it's an opportunity to immerse yourself and, um, and expand upon the academics and learning you're already doing here at UIC, so it counts towards your GPA. 
and graduation requirements. In order to make sure that you stay on track towards graduation, we have something called a course approval process, which you'll go through once you are accepted into a program. Um, with that comes a form that you bring to your academic um, college or your academic advisor in your home college. Uh, they will complete the equivalencies for you. So before you go abroad, you'll know exactly what, um, let's say you take biology, intro to biology abroad, perhaps that'll count for intro to biology here at UIC, or um, you take um, biology of, um, of sea lions, I'm making up of course, mountain biology of sea lions, and that might count as an upper division biology elective. Um, so it really depends, but you'll work with your academic advisors to know what you're taking beforehand. And so the way they do that is they review all the syllabi, which are made available far in advance on all of our program websites to confirm that they are meeting the requirements of UIC's degree plan. Um, there are some differences in academics abroad. I went over um, just sort of how if you choose the local university option, you're going to need to adapt to the way that they might teach. So sometimes this might be more lecture style. Other times um, it might be something called study hours where you're doing a lot more independent study work. Uh, so it really varies, but um, rest assured that we give orientation on this here at UIC and then your program partner will also do that as well. And the last is experiential learning. So because you are out and about conducting research perhaps, or doing site visits, uh, you're gonna be, the hours are gonna be uh, much more for a number of credit hours that you're getting. Um, so you're getting something that might seem like a fun excursion is actually an opportunity for you to uh, learn. Um, so there's always going to be a learning component attached to any sort of um, excursion or site visit. And speaking of experiential learning opportunities, and these are ones um, that I wanna highlight specifically for honors college students. Uh, these tend to be the, the experiential learning opportunities that honors college students um, gain the most from, but also that they're most interested in doing. Uh, the first is internships. And I love this example because this is a student who was an information decision sciences major, and he um, did an internship in Barcelona at a, an organization that was similar to Zillow or Redfin, so renting and um, and selling properties. Um, and so he worked on um, how to disseminate that information to uh, English speakers, as well as to um, expats who might be living in Barcelona. Um, these internships are going to be tailored to your professional and academic goals. So if you select a program that has is either a full-time internship or has an embedded internship component for you um, that allows uh, you to do a three credit hour class and then uh, do an internship placement. Usually it varies between um, 20, uh, 15 to 20 hours a week, but that does depend on your home college and um, any program can adapt to the number of hours you're in your internship to meet the home college at UIC's requirements. Um, there are English speaking internships available in a variety of disciplines. Uh, if you do have a second language that might offer uh, give you more opportunities. And then you earn academic credit for the internship course and placement. So you aren't paid, but you are earning credit, which will advance you um, towards your academic um, degree plan if you get elective credit for it, but also it is um, serving as a professional development opportunity for you, for which you can speak about this opportunity when you interview at future uh, with future employers. Um, the other thing to, to note about internships is that there is a process, you really get a lot of career readiness support throughout it. Um, you, When you apply to a program, you would work with the staff at our, par our partnership programs uh, to complete a resume, a cover letter, letter. they'll do a preliminary um, uh, interview with you to understand what your interests and goals are, and then they'll match you with an employer, and that, then you would do an interview for that employer. Um, and they would give you a first and second choice option. You're guaranteed an internship, which, as we all know, is not always the case um, in, in, the, in the real world. So um, definitely consider pursuing this opportunity if you're interested. Uh, research, which um, I know is something that honors college students are particularly inclined to do. We have a couple of different research um, opportunities. Some research opportunities allow you to do independent study projects, so to pick a topic um, of interest to you that might be related to the overall theme of the program, or as well as is, um, is rooted in the location you're studying. So really a high emphasis on place-based learning, using the environment and the local culture to conduct your research. Um, other programs 
have you embed in an already existing research project that might be um, led by local faculty or local practitioners for which you would support by working in their labs. Um, it's a great opportunity to explore an area of inquiry with it, um, that is of interest to you. And as Fermin mentioned, this is a great opportunity to begin your capstone project abroad. Um, it is a two semester um, program so for the Honors College. Um, if you wanted to start your research abroad in one of these programs that offers the structure and the um, course that will um, guide you through the process, uh, that is a great opportunity and then you can continue it when you return. Uh, if you're interested in doing research abroad, definitely connect with both Fermin and myself and we can figure out a way to um, integrate this into your capstone project uh, as well as um, offer explain some of the opportunities for you. Um, and then lastly is um, service learning. And so this, uh, you may be able to earn credit for this. Sometimes this is just an additional opportunity that you can take advantage of to immerse yourself in the culture. Other times, um, certain colleges and um, departments will offer credit for it. So it's similar to an internship, but it is a way for you to engage with and give back to your local host community. So many of these placements are going to be in nonprofit or local um, government organizations. Um, it'll help, um, it'll teach you about contributing to ethical and responsible service projects and offering sustainable solutions to the host culture in which you are working and contributing to. Um, it's also if you are interested in language development or really um, uh, strengthening your ties to the local community, service learning is a, is a great opportunity to do that, along with research and internships as well. But um, service learning, you're, you're working more directly with people um, day to day. Um, and for those of you that might not want to travel abroad, we are transitioning to a very different environment, wor working environment now, um, in which case experience working in a virtual internship capacity does offer a lot of um, important skill sets, as well as prepares you for ultimately um, pursuing a a remote working position if that's what you're interested in in the future. Um, so these are offered in collaboration with our global study abroad partners. Um, they're gonna give a lot of hands-on um, uh, career readiness support for you. Um, oops, sorry. And then it's often paired with an internship or global workforce um, seminar. And then you can it'll include professional development opportunities, career coaches, cultural seminars, career skill report sets as well. Um, and so you would be working remotely the same way you did. You might have done remote courses. You were just doing a remote internship. So working independently with check-ins via Zoom, et cetera, with your supervisors. So the application process, I mentioned that we are transitioning to a new online database. We have a program brochure of 200 plus programs where you can search for the program that you're interested in. Um, once you select that program, you can click apply now. It'll prompt you to attend a first steps info session, which you can do in person if you want some um, added advisor support, or you can watch a video online. You'll complete the questionnaire and then it'll allow you to apply to the program of your choosing. One of the requirements is that you meet with an, um, a study abroad advisor before you go abroad. You can either do that before you apply to a program or you can do that after once you've already selected a program and you've begun the process. Um, that is up to you. Um, and then and it's, it's a really simple process. And then all of the other paperwork or um, pre-departure um, information that you might need will be included in this Flames Abroad portal for you. So here's a picture of it. Uh, you click log in here. Um, and then lastly, to the most important uh, part of this presentation, how to fund your study abroad. Um, I'm running a little bit behind time, so I will go through this quite quickly. Um, funding study abroad. So every program is going to come with uh, a program cost Um, every program is going to come with a program cost sheet. So before you apply to your program, you'll know exactly how much it will cost and what scholarship opportunities are available to you. I highly recommend you click on the um, finance tab on the program brochure because it'll lay that out for you. Um, right now, <clears throat> due to COVID, some of our partners are delayed in getting um, spring 2022 costs to us. But as soon as that information is made available, we will share that on our program brochure database. 
Um, financial aid can travel with you um, for semester length programs. All of your financial aid can travel with you with the exception of tuition waivers. However, for the summer, only federal aid can be applied um, to your study abroad program. So this means federal lo student loans as well as the Pell Grant. Um, if you choose to apply for a summer program, there are additional scholarship opportunities. They also tend to be a, a lot less in cost because they're shorter duration. Um, study abroad is similar in cost to uh, room and board and and tuition here at UIC. Um, a lot of the, the difference in costs that students are noticing is because um, they might be, might be a commuter student now and they're going to have to pay for room and board abroad as well. Um, there are some programs that are more expensive. However, they might offer more scholarships and more automatic discounts to sort of make it more similar to the cost of tuition here at UIC, cost of attendance here at UIC. Other programs might be lower cost, but there are less um, scholarships available to students. So it really just depends on the model and what type of financial aid you are receiving. And this is something we can talk with you to find the program that makes the most sense um, with your financial aid. Um, additionally, most of our partners offer automatic discounts to our um, study abroad participants, um, anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000 to lower the overall cost. This means no additional scholarship application, just an automatic discount. However, on top of that, um, there are a lot of scholarships you can apply for. All the study abroad office scholarships are going to be housed in UIC SNAP, so that means the Honors College um, isn't a, a study abroad office, but a UIC scholarship, the Honors College, the LAS um, scholarships, the German Department scholarships, our office, um, Office of Global Engagement. And then um, there's also something called nationally competitive scholarships. Those are going to be external applications, um, such as the Gilman, which I'll speak to in a moment. And then all of the partners, so the program that you ultimately choose to apply to, offers additional scholarships as well. They're applied to options. Um, most scholarships that are offered are based on financial need. There are a handful of merit scholarships. Uh, so speaking of national scholarships, the Gilman International Scholarship um, and the Gilman McCain Scholarship. So the Gilman International Scholarship is for Pell recipients. I will say that there are a lot of opportunities, opportunities for Pell recipients. So if you are one of those students, um, certainly reach out because there's significant funding. Um, the Gilman McCain Scholarship is for child dependents of active duty military um, uh, military service members. Um, there are awards of up to $5,000. So very, very um, large award amounts. UIC, although it's a national scholarship, UIC students consistently receive this scholarship every year, um, every semester. We have anywhere from three to 12 students who receive it each semester um, because they're really looking for driven students um, who have a, a diverse background and are intentionally choosing a study abroad program and they need some financial support in order to pursue this co-curricular opportunity. There is an opportunity for $3,000 additional if you choose to study a critical need language abroad. So Russian, Korean, Chinese, Portuguese, a couple of others, um, Arabic. Um, and then these are the application deadlines for the Gilman International Scholarship. And we are offering two uh, Gilman scholarships. One on September 10th is going to be in person. Um, the registration is on our Your Major Abroad series, as well as on our event page. Um, it's if you want to attend, please register so that we can make accommodations with um, the room to, for social distancing. And then another one on September 15th from 4 to 5 p.m. Um, and that will take place on Zoom. Uh, so study abroad scholarship writing workshops. This is a great way to actually get experience writing. It's not just an info session. Um, we partner with the Office of the Vice Provost of uh, Diversity to help you explore your identity and review best um, and how that might be able to be written about in terms of a scholarship essay for study abroad. Um, we're going to brainstorm effective ways to highlight your diversity and your goals as well. Um, and then also review best practices for scholarship essays. So come prepared to write, brainstorm, um, and discuss some ideas that you have for your essays. Those are both on Zoom, September 16th and September 23rd. I'm going to skip over the, the alumni testimonials. If we have time, I'll go over those after Michelle speaks. Um, they're program partners for Honors College. These are a handful of um, Honors College. Um, they're geared towards students who are um, uh, high achieving. So the um, 
ISA Euro Scholars is an opportunity to do research abroad. Um, you need a 3.5 GPA. There are programs in Belgium, Amsterdam, uh, Switzerland, and you would actually do 12 to 15 hours of research in a laboratory at that university, as well as taking a, a language or culture course of your choosing. Um, the University of Minnesota Psychology and Research in Madrid, similar structure to Euro Scholars. Um, IES Amsterdam allows students to enroll at BU Amsterdam um, in their honors college. And so you can take um, competitive courses taught by um, professors worldwide. Um, it's also a pretty challenging learning environment. So we recommend it to honors college students because there's a lot of independent study um, required. Um, SIT research programs and SFS research programs, those are all centered around a common theme. Um, and they have programs in um, less traditional locations, so not Europe centric, um, where you can do an independent study project of your choosing. And then you're also taking a research class um, on either quantitative or qualitative um, uh, approaches uh, for three credits. So it's a great way to prepare for graduate school work if you're interested and really get a foundation for how to conduct research. Um, and then lastly, uh, CA internship programs, which are um, all of their locations have an embedded internship component if you're interested in doing that. Um, faculty directed program highlights um, by Honors College Faculty Fellows. So these are all led by Honors College Faculty Fellows. These are UIC programs, um, a cohort of UIC students. Um, Elements in Motion, Move and Be Moved by um, Barrett Arbelge in, in Applied Health Science, and then Cambridge Qualitative Human Movement um, in Applied Health Sciences. The, one of them is a spring break program and the other one is a summer program. Um, families as they really are, a Dutch American comparison. Um, that's a sociology project, a sociology program um, by Barbara Rissman, disaster preparedness and global health in the Caribbean. So you're um, in the College of Nursing. Field Ecology in Ecuador, Biological Sciences. So you will be actually conducting research um, with, um, I believe it's uh, sea lions and turtles is the focus of that program. Uh, social service internships in Paris. So if you have a French language background um, and you're interested in the applied health sciences, you are going to be doing internships at various social service um, organizations that will be working mostly with immigrant populations um, in Paris. And then lastly, global supply chain management in Mexico for our business majors. Um, you'll be um, taking courses at Tech de Monterey as well um, with the course uh, led by Tony Pagano and Juan Jose. Um, and it's on supply chain management with excursions to various parts of Mexico to understand how the supply chain management works in there. And lastly, the, point, the moment we're all been waiting for, the our main honors college um, program, Pop, the Art and Culture that Rocked British Society in the 60s. So I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Michelle McCrillis to talk a little bit about the spring break program um, this year. Thanks, Molly. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. And it, it's always exciting to talk about this program. It's a kind of labor of love for me um, and something that I'm, I'm really excited to be offering honors students. Uh, just a little bit about me. Um, my name is Michelle McCrillis and I'm Assistant Dean in the Honours College. I've been here for four years, but I'm also an art historian and taught for many years art history um, at, a, at Columbus State University in Georgia. And actually while there, I, um, I developed and taught study abroad uh, several times um, in Italy, but also uh, in England. And this course is sort of uh, grown out of a program I developed then, um, which um, is very much in my wheelhouse. Um, the course in this case at UIC is gonna be specifically for honor students, which is really exciting. I think this is the first time that we've been able to do a study abroad program with an honors course. Um, and the honors course is a core course, honors 124. Um, pop, the art and culture that rocked British society in the 1960s. And so any honors students can take this, including first year students. Um, it, it will be next spring. And as a core course, you not only will earn three credits, um, you will also earn three honors units. It will, of course, count as your honors activity. Um, and also you satisfy gen ed requirements. So it um, actually fits into two of the gen ed requirements, the understanding the creative arts and understanding the past. So um, the other real benefit of this 
is that um, the study abroad component is just during spring break. Um, this is very short, I know, but it is very immersive and, it, and we will have already done all the preparation before we go. So we have looked, looked at the artists, looked at the fashion, looked at the television and film and all the different components. And once we're in London, we'll really be out there looking at the real world examples of all these things. Um, the other huge advantage, I think, for honours students that find, particularly those that find it difficult to fit study abroad into their major requirements, um, is that you're only away for spring break. So you're taking your regular courses in the spring, uh, including this one. Um, you don't have to, you, you can take all your credits that you need to. Um, it doesn't impact if you have a job except for that spring break. Um, so other kinds of things that are challenging sometimes for honours students, I think this is a great way to do it, to experience study abroad, um, but not have to have those challenges. Um, just a tiny overview of what we'll be doing. Um, I, as I said, I'm an art historian, so sort of central to this, we'll be looking at pop art in Britain. Um, and what you might not realize, we often associate pop art with New York and um, artists like Andy Warhol, most famously um, in the 1960s in America. But actually, pop art was first coined, was first a concept in London in the 1950s. And the reasons for this are really fascinating. Um, in a post-World War II um, austere, um, very drab environment in the UK, um, this incredibly colorful um, excitement about popular culture, specifically American popular culture, and the huge influence American popular culture had on Britain um, emerges in the 1950s. So the reasons for that are cultural. Um, they have a lot to do with class divides in Britain. Um, they have a lot to do with social change that starts to happen. And it's kind of the cusp of a, of a global change that really um, comes about in the 1960s. So these origins, I think, are very revealing and tell us a lot, not only about um, British culture, but also about American culture and the relationship between America and Britain. So we'll be looking at uh, pop art, um, but another very important part of this, and Molly, you can go to the next slide um, or a few slides. We'll be looking also at photography, um, at fashion. Uh, the, the fashion is really exciting part of this because um, it really reflects changes in, the, in ideas about gender. Um, men's dress becomes more and more um, um, almost feminized and similarly um, women's dress changes radically. And the, the, um, the look of hair and fashion and models um, and the way they're photographed, all of these things reflect um, youth culture and, and, and really extraordinary changes um, in, in, in culture um, and attitudes to sexuality and gender at the time. Um, and of course, film and, and um, television shows can be really great ways of kind of accessing what people are thinking about in this period, um, as is music. A big part of this, of course, is, the, is what, what's called the British invasion in music. So um, I think the Beatles are kind of a central group um, because they reflect so much of what's happening. And we'll also look at the Rolling Stones, the Who, and a number of other um, uh, musical groups. Um, but the Beatles kind of really epitomize, I think, a lot of, a lot of what's happening at the time. Um, in terms of uh, the places we'll be going once we're in London, um, we'll go to some of the really um, amazing museums, art museums, um, particularly Tate Britain, which has an extraordinary collection of British pop art. Um, we'll also go to the Victoria and Albert Museum. Um, I'm really excited that we've been able to arrange, if I can have the next slide, Molly. Um, we're going to be able to look at a private viewing of photography from their archives, um, things that we'll already have studied in class before we go. And also we're going to get a tour of the costume collection at the v &A. The Victoria and Albert Museum has one of the most important costume collections in the world. Um, and the next slide, Molly. Um, and they have some really great examples of 1960s fashion. Um, particularly paper dresses, apparently, you know, in the 60s, um, 
disposable dresses were invented and, and you could actually buy a paper dress and just wear it for the day. Um, so the fashions of the 60s are really, really fun to look at and we'll get a special behind the scenes tour. Um, and then we'll of course also be um, able to travel around uh, London on the tube. We'll get a, you'll get a tube pass. You'll be able to, to visit um, places on your own and as a group. Um, we'll all, can you go to the next slide, Molly? Um, we'll also be going to spend a day in Liverpool. And I'm, I'm, I think this is a really great, um, even though we're only in, in the UK for a week, I think it's really wonderful to get out of London just for a day and see a totally different part of the UK. Um, I, I, of course, Liverpool is central to the story of the Beatles, um, but it also, I think, is a good uh, contrast to London and to also sort of talk about the effect of the swinging 60s, not just on London, but also on other parts of the UK. Um, and we'll look at, we'll do a Beatles tour. We'll kind of really look at the places that the Beatles originated from. Uh, Liverpool is a really important port city. Uh, and we'll also explore Tate Liverpool, which also has some really great examples of pop art. Um, and then we'll definitely fit in a theater visit or um, a musical concert. Um, we haven't finalized that yet, but there'll be an opportunity to um, go and see some kind of performance, which is always a really exciting thing to do in London. Um, uh, also eat, that's a very important part of experiencing another, another country. Uh, and one of the things that's quintessentially British is afternoon tea. So I'm going to make sure that we get a chance to, to have um, a very formal kind of afternoon tea and kind of talk again about the culture of that and what, what is that about and, and what does that tell us again about um, British culture. Uh, the next slide, please, Molly. Um, so um, more information about the program is coming in the next couple of weeks, um, including a link to the web page with the application process, um, which will be the same as um, Molly already outlined for any study abroad program. Only students that enroll in um, the program will be taking the course, so everyone in the course will be doing the spring break in, in the UK. Um, but you first apply for the program. And um, the really exciting part of this, which um, we, we offered last year, but obviously the program didn't run last year because of COVID, um, but we had a, a grant. Uh, this is outside of the scholarship funding that we already provide honor students. So the scholarships that are provided by the Honors College, you can apply for. But for this program, we are also offering a $1,500 grant. Now the program is actually um, uh, just over $3,000. So the $1,500 grant will halve the cost of the program. And it's not merit-based, it's first come first served. The scholarships are merit-based, but the grant will be simply for applying to the program. They will be limited, which is why it's first come first served. Um, but that is a really exciting way that we can make this affordable for our students. We want you all to take advantage of study abroad. And if not my program, any of the incredible options that Molly has, has outlined, because I think you'll agree there's almost something for everyone, depending on what you're studying or the length of time that you're able to travel. Um, I know Marley and her team, and for me, will find you something incredible to do that will stimulate you, will satisfy your curiosity about the world, um, will further your research, your, your academics, and also will really set you apart when you're applying for graduate schools, for professional schools, and for careers in the future. So my program's exciting. I'd love you to come with me, um, but there are many, many other options too. So whatever you decide, I hope you, you do some kind of study abroad or research abroad um, while you're at UIC and in the Honors College, and we will do everything we can to make that possible. Um, so that's really my little spiel on my program, and I'd be happy to answer any questions, and I'm sure Marley or Fermin also can answer any questions that you may have. Yeah, thank you so much, Michelle. I personally, if I was an honors college student, I would be going on this program. It uh, sounds so interesting, and it's a great way to go abroad for a short amount of time if your schedule might not allow for another time as well. 
Um, and it's definitely content that can be relatable to any field and, and something that if you have these interests, uh, an opportunity to explore something that might be outside of your major as well. Um, I'm just going to do a quick uh, next step so that you um, know what to do next. And then um, we can turn over to questions for either myself, Fermin, or Michelle. Um, apply for a passport if you do not have one. If you are, um, there'll be a presentation on um, passports later today um, at 2 p.m. So if you need assistance in learning how to apply for a passport, please go there. Um, it is taking anywhere from four to six months to get a passport. I actually personally just had to renew my passport. Um, and so the U.S. Post Office that's right near campus has a passport agency there that can assist you with that process. Um, speak with your academic advisor, let them know you want to study abroad and get their guidance on what term makes the most sense for your degree plan. They can say, hey, I think you should study abroad over spring, or I think you should study abroad in the summer, or um, spring break is the time to do it. And then they'll set aside specific courses that you might need to fulfill um, during that term. And that'll make us finding an appropriate program for you even easier. Um, and then they hold that spot. Um, attend and review the study abroad first step presentation if you haven't already done that. Um, you can do that now. Our, although we haven't opened our programs for applications yet, our first step is open for you to complete. Um, do some research on the programs. The program brochure is available to you. Uh, schedule an appointment with a study abroad advisor. I can't wait to talk to all of you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, and then lastly, apply for your program. Our goal is that they'll open up by Friday, um, but we're having some technical uh, challenges. And by Friday, you should be able to um, open up, uh, apply to a program. Uh, so yeah, any questions? Um, if you haven't already followed us on Instagram, here's a QR code. You can scan the screen. We'd love, we just hit a thousand followers this morning. So please uh, go ahead and follow us. You can put your question in the chat if that's easier, um, or you can just unmute yourself and share it with the group. <laughs> 